prominent Republicans are continuing to lie about the violent insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th, while others are trying to pretend the last year of Donald Trump's presidency never happened. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. After a year of isolation, it can be difficult to get a firm grasp on time. Quarantine felt like some sort of Twilight Zone-esque black hole. All I remember is I was in my studio with an audience. Then for a while, I was in an attic with a magic door and some wasps. I became best friends with a sea captain painting. And now I'm back here in a mostly empty studio. And somehow, last night, Wally, our cue card guy, was my second guest. Don't think that's going to be a every Wednesday thing, Wally. I can't next Wednesday anyway. I'm doing Colbert. Son of a bitch. Anyway. It seems like the calendar's going backwards. Everyone's talking about friends and Benifer and cicadas, and it really feels like I accidentally time-traveled back to the mid-2000s. Even Fox News seems stuck in a time loop, as evidenced by this segment from last night. Well, I never thought that we'd ever have a president that started his entire political career in the home of not one but two unrepentant domestic terrorists whose group, the Weather Underground, bombed the NYPD police headquarters, the State Department, the U.S. Capitol, and more. I never thought we'd have a president that sat in the pews of a radical pastor for 20-plus years, and I never thought we'd elect the disciple of radical Saul Alinsky or President Bragg about doing drugs with his Choom gang and said that he even tried drugs enthusiastically. Great message for kids. All right, first of all, you sound like a D.A.R.E. commercial from the 80s. If you kids don't remember D.A.R.E., it was a group that made T-shirts for skateboarders to wear, ironically. Seriously, you're warning about the dangers of Choom? I feel like I'm back in middle school pretending to listen to a motivational speaker lecture us about how marijuana fries your brain while I type boobs on a calculator for my friends. See, that's what today's kids are missing with smartphones. No more fun calculator tricks. Now you just send your friends two chestnut emojis. We had to work for it. it took years to crack that 80085 would look like boobs on a calculator. It wasn't us that cracked it either. It was the janitor. Turns out he was some kind of genius. Fox News is apparently still obsessing over Obama. Now, there are some who think we should stop talking about President Trump, but in our defense, Republicans still call him the leader of their party. He's talking about running again in 2024, and he's under criminal investigation. Meanwhile, most Obama news these days is showbiz-related. I wouldn't be surprised if he turns up in the Friends reunion. Now, uh, for my money, they were on a break. But if you're wondering why Fox is uh, rehashing right-wing nonsense from 13 years ago, it's apparently because According to a new book, Obama called Trump a madman, a racist, sexist pig, that lunatic, and a corrupt mother That's what you're outraged about? Trump's been called much worse, and deservedly so. I feel like even Trump's friends would describe him that way. Hallmark makes birthday cards specifically for Trump that basically say the same thing. It's from Ivanka, such a sweetheart, a corrupt sweetheart. I mean, seriously, even the people who worked for Trump called him an idiot, a moron, and a dope. And before they sold their souls, guys like Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, and Ted Cruz were calling him a xenophobic, race-baiting bigot, a con artist, a pathological liar, and a jackass. Michael Cohen was his fixer and right-hand man, and he said pretty much the same in a book and on national television. Although Michael Cohen's best burns these days are reserved for Rudy Giuliani's son, Andrew, who is running for governor of New York. And then there's Andrew Giuliani. Andrew makes Eric look like a valedictorian of Harvard. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fry, I mean, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, you know, Andrew even failed Trump University. That's to give you an idea of just how stupid he is. Can't believe I'm saying it, but I think prison was great for Michael Cohen. Came out with a new attitude and a quiver full of zingers. Got rid of that baby blue jacket. But hey, he's not the only one who seems to be stuck in a time loop. Yesterday, the House GOP's new pro-Trump conference chair, Elise Stefanik, who replaced Liz Cheney after Cheney committed the grave sin of saying the election was not stolen, took to the floor to praise Trump's economic record. But see if you can catch what she left out. It's so small, you might miss it. Americans across this country are facing crisis after crisis. Just think, in just over a year ago, in early 2020, our economy was booming, our standing in the world was strong, we had just rebuilt our nation's military, and our communities and families were thriving. Here we are, a little over one year later, in just over 100 days, President Biden and Speaker Pelosi have dismantled that foundation. Did she just yada, yada, yada a global pandemic? 
Are you people seriously so cynical that you think Americans would just forget about an entire year in which over half a million people died and the economy suffered a once in a century crash that included rising poverty and child hunger? Because our president thought coronavirus was one of those ignore it until it goes away problems. It's like high cholesterol or asbestos. These people are desperate to erase the horrors of Trump's presidency and inhabit an alternate reality where it wasn't a colossal and deeply unpopular failure. And look, I get that you wish Trump's presidency magically ended in the March of 2020 in the same way Dexter wishes the show ended in season seven, but Michael C. Hall, he grew that weird patchy beard and it can't be undone. They're trying to erase the pandemic the same way they're trying to erase the violent insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. GOP leaders like Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell are trying to stop legislation that would create a bipartisan commission to investigate the riot, even though it passed the House yesterday with 35 Republican votes. In fact, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson is so desperate to erase the history of what happened on January 6th that he's still lying about the attack and calling it a mostly peaceful protest. Even calling it an insurrection, uh, it wasn't. You know, I condemn the breach, I condemn the violence, but uh, to say there were thousands of armed insurrectionists uh, you know, breaching the Capitol, intent on overthrowing the government, is just simply false narrative. By and large, it was, it was all it was peaceful protests, except for, you know, there, there were a number of people, basically agitators, that uh, whipped the crowd and, and breached the Capitol. We were all watching it live. We saw it happen. You can't just wave your hand in front of our faces and tell us it didn't happen, like you're starring in some new Disney Plus spinoff called <laughs> Jedi. There are, like, a bunch of videos that you can watch and see what happened. I really don't want to keep playing them, but apparently I have to. The pro-Trump crowd fought with the police. This is exactly what was feared, but in no way is this a surprise. It has been fueled by the president's rhetoric. We followed the aggrieved and infuriated Trump supporters as they stormed the building. The cost of that rhetoric is increasingly clear. I need my rights! As crowds tonight are still swirling around Congress, and America's long journey as a stable democracy appears to be in genuine doubt. Again, as we said yesterday, the British accent really hits home how serious it was. The rioters have breached the Capitol and like a curly-whirly left out in the sun, the damage can never be undone. And now stay tuned for an all-new episode of Cuckoo, starring Andy Samberg from the film Space Chimps. <laughs> Both real. It's telling that Republicans are so desperate to erase the last year of Trump's presidency, as well as the reality of what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. They're trying to erase it because they can't defend it, and they know the American people overwhelmingly rejected it. These people are so detached from reality, you'd almost think they'd... Try drugs enthusiastically. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.